Welcome back to YouTube. We have another again from in-depth tech reviews, and today is a very exciting day for Android users. Finally, Google released Android 12 Beta 1, and there are a lot of changes that I'm going to show you in this video. So without further ado, let's jump in. So here's the first beta of Android 12 installed on my Pixel 4a. Let's take a look at the build number. It says here SPB1.210331.013. I'm not sure about the OTA size because I installed the OTA image manually. So now let's take a look at the features. The first thing to talk about here is the new lock screen. On the right side, I have developer preview 3 installed on my Pixel 3 XL to show you the difference. First, if you don't have any notifications on your lock screen, you will see a much bigger clock compared to the previous version. Also, the date and weather are now located at the top left instead of being under the clock. And when I swipe up to enter my PIN code, you will see a redesigned keypad with circular buttons. Also, Google is no longer using an alphanumeric keypad. Instead, you will only see the numbers. The padlock icon has been dropped. And when you tap on the numbers, they briefly change to squares, which is a different animation from the previous build. Also, the delete and enter buttons got a new fill color to look more prominent compared to the previous version. And when you enter the wrong pin, you will see the wrong pin warning written in black instead of red like in the previous build. While all other unlocking methods are exactly the same. You will also notice a solid background color instead of using a shaded one. Now let's take a look at the lock screen if you have notifications. First, they are much smaller with more rounded corners and the background color is different. The clock is now shifted towards the top left instead of being in the center. It's much smaller but still bigger than the one we have in developer preview 3. You will also see a bigger gap between your conversations and normal notifications, which is not the case in the previous build. You will also see the same gap if you have your media controls on the lock screen. And by this, you can easily differentiate between your media controls, your conversations and the other notifications. While in developer preview three, they are stacked on top of each other. And when you swipe to dismiss, you will no longer see the settings and the snooze icons. Also, the notifications shape will slightly change when you swipe to any of the sides. The always on display got redesigned as well to match the lock screen. Plus the clock is using a thinner font compared to the one used in the lock screen and in developer preview 3. The always on display will also show the bigger clock design if you don't have any notifications on your lock screen or if the do not disturb is activated. You will also see new transitions between the always on display and the lock screen so let me show you how they look. One more time. In Google I.O. they talked about a new animation that takes place when you press the power button on your lock screen. The animation should start from the power button side and then fill the entire screen, but it seems like I don't have this animation on my device yet. Now let's talk about the notification shade and the quick settings, and this is where most of the work is done. First, the tiles are much bigger compared to the circular ones we used to have for years, and when you tap on any of them, you will see a new animation that looks like glowing sparkles. Also, the number of tiles when your notification shade is half expanded is only 4 versus 6 in developer preview 3. But when you expand your notification shade all the way down, you will see 8 quick tiles in each page versus only 6 in the previous versions. The brightness slider is much thicker now and I found it to be a lot easier to grab with your finger plus it's more precise. But the only thing I found missing here when you tap and hold on the slider and move your finger it will no longer minimize everything on the screen like before. The settings and the edit buttons are now much bigger and they are next to each other on the same line and instead of being separated with the pagination indicators. Overall, I do like this new design a lot because I found it to be much easier to use compared to the previous versions of Android, plus it looks better in my opinion. So please share with me your thoughts in the comments below. In this new design, the status bar acts differently. So for example, if you have your notification shade half expanded, you will see the status bar icon and the clock at the very top of the screen, while here you will see the clock always on the top left corner with the status bar icons and the date are within the quick settings area. When you fully expand your notification shade, your status bar including the clock will be pushed down to be on top of the brightness slider and that's when the date will be revealed. You will also notice the notification shade is always filling the entire screen with a solid background instead of having this shaded area 
And that's exactly the case when it's half expanded. And that means you will no longer see this transparent space between different notifications categories. The notifications here are also matching the lock screen in having bigger gaps between them. And when you reply back to your messages from here, you will see a smaller text field and the send button will no longer show unless you start typing. And you will no longer see the snooze button overlapping with the send button in this area. And instead, you can get access to it once you finish typing. Now let's talk about the tiles and there are some few changes here. First, you will see a new alarm tile. Tapping on it will take you to the clock app to set an alarm. And also the extra dim feature got its own icon and instead of using this empty background. But there are a lot of features missing in this area. As per Google's I.O., we should get four more tiles, one for the smart home devices, one for Google Pay, and the two for blocking the camera and the mic. Plus, the camera and the mic indicators that should appear at the top right corner if any app tried to access them. I'm currently trying to activate most of the missing features on my Pixel 4a by rooting the device and applying some ADB commands, but I didn't succeed yet. However, once done, I will make a follow-up video, so stay tuned. Talking about notifications with this build, I managed to get the new conversation widget that was missing from the previous builds. So if you are excited to see how it looks, try to check your widgets list, and you should see it under your system UI. Then tap and hold on the widget and add it to your home screen. It will first ask you which conversation you want to link it to the widget. It will show you the most recent ones you have, here I have one from Messenger, and as you see, the widget is now added to the home screen. If you have any pending messages in your conversation, you will see this small message icon under the profile picture, and when you resize your widget to make it bigger, you will see the actual message right here. Tapping on the widget will simply take you to the conversation, but it will show you this weird uh, blank system UI page. I'm not sure why it seems to be a bug. Uh, also, the uh, widget will not be updated even after checking your messages. So the feature is not very useful for now. You can also resize the widget to make it as big as the whole screen like this. Next, Google Play Store. And after installing Android 12 Beta 1, my apps and games page has been renamed to manage apps and device. And when I go inside each one, I see totally different pages. Here I have only two tabs, while here I have five. This new design should be pushed to everyone in the future, but it seems to be only available on the latest build of Android 12. Anyways, let's see what we have here. First, you have the overview tab. Under overview, you will get the play protect feature. It will show you straight away if you have any harmful apps on your device or not. And when you go inside, you can run the scan manually. After that, we have the pending downloads. Here you should see the apps that need to be updated or downloading in the background. Also, it will show you if all your apps are up to date without the need to go inside the page, which is also a nice touch. And after that, you have free up space. Free up space will allow you to multi-select the apps that you don't need and then hit the delete button. You can also expand to see more information about the app if you want to. Next, we have share apps and it's exactly the same as the share page in the old design but instead of navigating to a separate page you can quickly tap on send or receive to take the action and you no longer get a separate page for this the last item in the list is called ratings and reviews from here you can check the unreviewed apps and games to start reviewing them or check the previously posted reviews now let's take a look at the manage page here you can check the installed apps on your device you can also change the filter to make it not installed. Here you also have another filter called games. So you can only check the games, not apps and games together. And if you have it on installed, here it will show you another filter called updates available. So you can quickly check what apps require updates. Not only this, but it will allow you also to multi-select apps and delete them from your device. And if the apps are not installed on the device, you can also multi-select them and remove them from your library or download them altogether. Next, the power menu got some tweaks. First, the hold to reader icon is now different. It has a circle around it and it matches the device theme. Also, when you tap on the more button, you will see a slightly slower animation and it's also using a different color. Other than this, it works exactly the same. Now let's take a look at the changes under settings and the most exciting one is under location. 
Now when you choose any app that has access, you will see a new toggle called Use Precise Location, which is the same feature we saw in iOS 14. I see Google is trying to be more competitive with Apple when it comes to privacy, which is a good thing. Next, the battery. And here, Adaptive Battery has been renamed to Adaptive Preferences. And when you go inside, you will see the same toggles of Android 11 instead of using the new one. Plus, they are listed under the graphical representation of the feature instead of being on top. Next, the storage. And here you will see the smart storage option at the top of the list. And also the free up space has the Google Files icon next to it. Next, under accessibility, the extra dim feature got a small description to explain how the feature works. Next, safety and the emergency. And there is a new button here called Open Personal Safety that will take you straight away to the Personal Safety app. Next, under System and then Gestures and then Power Menu, you will see a new toggle here called Hold for Assistant, which means when you activate the toggle, when you press and hold, you will get your Google Assistant activated instead of accessing the power menu. But keep in mind, activating this feature will not allow you to access your power menu, plus the new My Devices and the My Wallet tiles that should be available in the future are still missing in this build. So the only way to access your cards and home devices is by using the corresponding apps. So it's better to keep it off if you rely on the power menu. And finally, the toast notifications now show the app icon. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in the first beta of Android 12. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.